Okay, this how-to video is going to go through how to use the via structures uh, inside of the Cadence PCB tools. So what are via structures? Um, they're a combination of either vias, C lines, C lines and vias, keep out areas, return path vias, um, multiple vias, different different options for kind of what you need to do um, from a, a fan out point of view on your BJ devices or, or things like that. Something you may want to reuse. So we'll start off under the root menu. We've got structures and we can create. So I've got different types of options here. I can do a high speed via structure or a standard via structure. This will be license dependent. There's also an L comp, which is going to be a separate video. So I won't cover that in this video here. So we'll start off with a standard via structure. Let's just call this fan out, for example. Um, and all I want to do effectively is look, I've got a, a, a pin, I've got a C line, I've got a, a via. So I'm literally just going to draw a window around here then it writes out effectively the fan out XML. So I've got to write that out and save that out. That would then give me an option uh, as uh, to place this. So that would write a via structure. Um, so if I click OK, I can then use the, the root structures place, pick the fan out via, and then effectively just go and select the pin. So right mouse button, snap pick to pin. So that's one option to go and place it all the pins I need to do. Um, another option would be to use the root create fan out. I can enable via structures here pick the via structure that I want and obviously there's a library option here and then based on the find option I can do this on a pin or a symbol so if I pick symbol click the symbol it would then add the fan out via to all the pins that had a net so um, that's one method of using kind of the, a, a standard via structure the next option so root structures create uh, I want to do a high speed via structure which is something a bit more complex than just the default options so um, we've got a description which goes through the different options that we can have what we can include there's a define and generate. So um, let's just call this one breakout. Um, and if we just pan into the screen, I'm just going to pick these four C lines. So I've, I've, I've manually rooted these out. I want to create these and reuse these. So I literally just draw a window around the, the segments that I want to use. Um, it's asking me to pick the origin. So pick the origin, pick the pin or the end of the segment. Uh, do I want to return a, use a return path? Not in this scenario. So I'm just going to say no. And it then writes out the breakout so I can then write that out and that then becomes as an available structure for me to use. We'll do another one. So obviously I've got um, some C lines. I've got a keep out area, a couple of vias for a differential pair, and I've got some return path vias as well. So again, we'll, we'll call this one, um, let's call this DP let's just call this one DP1. So I'm then going to draw a window around the objects that I want. You can see all highlights. The origin point again is going to be this end of this segment here. So we'll click on the pin here. In this scenario, I want to define a return path. So I'm just going to say yes. And then I then go and pick the four vias that I'm interested in. Once I'm happy with that, right mouse button and I can then complete the return path. And this then writes the file out, DP1. And that allows me to effectively store that as a, as a via structure. And that becomes available in my list. Um, the next option, obviously, we need to make sure that from a visibility point of view, We've got things like the, all the layers turned on. So if I'm doing a via, a through hole vias, I've got multiple vias and a keep out area and some shapes and stuff. I want to make sure that we use all of this here. So um, let's just call this one um, uh, multiple via. Uh, I'm going to window select the objects here. The origin point is going to be on the pin. And then that was then write that file out. The final option. Um, I've got another DP virus, let's just call this one DP2. In this scenario here, what I want to do is I want to make sure um, this is going to be a, a free placing structure. So I, I could use this in line somewhere, so not specifically going to be on a pin, but it allows me to write a structure out. So I'm literally just going to window select everything I've got here. Um, the origin point is going to be on one of the C lines, so we'll just zoom in and make sure we get the end of the C line. And then, yes, there's a return path, so again, we'll pick the two vias. We'll complete the return path and we'll write this one out. So once the via structures are written out, we want to be able to start using these. So let's have a look at, um, effectively, if you look under the root structures and place, I get the options here to place them. So there's my, my list. So we've seen the fan out one already. Let's just do the breakout one. So this is a high speed one. It hasn't got a return path. So I can then effectively just go and pick the pins that I'm interested in to go and place these down. So that's, that's option one. Um, we'll do root structures and place so let's go and use maybe the multi via one um, so in this scenario i want to rotate this so i can just rotate it in the option here i can do a right click and rotate 
um, and if we just pan across here what I can do here let's just rotate this again is I could just pick the pins um, so if I pick the pins and do it manually I can also do a window select of the pins so if I just window select all of these pins here Let's take off the free place via structures first. I can then window select the pins and it's going to add them to the ones that have an active um, net. So um, if we just oops that and enable the include unassigned pins and then we window the pins this time, it's going to add the via structure to all of them. Um, we've also got um, the, the root structures place. We're going to pick the DP1 option. Now in this scenario, um, I need to make sure that I assign a return path net. So effectively, if I just hit the browse button here, I'm going to get a list of all the available nets. If it's got a voltage property, enable the DC nets, and I can then effectively go and select the ground. Um, once that's there, I can then effectively just come in and pick the pins that I want to, and that will place those directly. Um, so that's that one. And then the final one, so roots, structure, place. DP2, uh, which is the other high speed ones, is the free place one. And what I need to do here is just make sure I add the, the free place structures, which will allow me to... Um, places where I need again need to make sure I've got the return path net and I can then go and place these as and when required there is also options things like root structures so I can replace so I could pick a via structure and replace one with another via structure um, I can replace an actual via with a via structure so if you add um, maybe I've got an individual through hole via and I need to place it with some stacked micro vias for a, to turn it into an HDI type 3 design this is a good option so do the, the via structure as a stacked via and then use the replace wire with wire structure. Refresh would update them from the library. I can redefine them so I can make changes to them. I could disband them, which would take them away from being a library based part because these are obviously all symbol based. You can see I'm hovering over these, these are symbols. And then the final option is to export them out, which would export them out uh, to an XML file that you could then use.